Well, hello, our fellow friends, our fellow neighbors, and our fellow shining stars. Our next trolley stop is here, and our next trolley stop is now. Welcome back to another all-new episode of PR from the Hearts Children's Book Spotlight Series. To be precise, we have reached episode number 218. That is the 218th trolley stop here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series here at PR from the Heart as part of our 10-year anniversary celebration that continues for the rest of 2024. My name is John Masalonis, the manager of PR from the Heart and the host of the Children's Book Spotlight Series. Normally, I am joined, as always, by my faithful furry friend and forever companion, Little Forest. He is actually back in our studios in San Diego. We are on on the road, on location, we are in Hollywood, California. This is the first time that we are emanating from the Third Wheel Podcast Studio in Hollywood. Special thanks to Mike and the entire team for opening up their doors and their hearts to the Children's Book Spotlight Series and to us here at PR from the Heart. We hope that wherever you are, wherever you may be, that you are enjoying the remaining days of July as the month of August approaches as we are now almost headed into the dog days of summer. But this is a very special time. Not only is it the 10-year anniversary celebration of PR from the Heart, not only are we about ready to head into the start of the back-to-school season, but this is kickoff week of building a culture of reading in your classroom. The flagship event here at PR from the Heart, which is actually going to be heading this year to our locale, our backyard, our neighborhood of San Diego, California at Barnes & Noble Mira Mesa. We're going to be joined by some incredible children's authors, including one children's author and illustrator who is joining us today. And as you know, if you've been a longtime viewer and listener of the Children's Book Spotlight series, our fellow friends, our fellow neighbors, and of course, our fellow shining stars, it's important that when we move forth, with our next steps, and especially if we're taking a big leap. There's a lot of talented men and women that come to Hollywood with a dream, and they realize that it involves faith and trust in themselves. Ultimately, it involves embracing your destiny. So feel into that a little bit, those three words, embracing your destiny. And if you're wondering, you know, I'm wondering what does that mean? What does it sound like? What does it look like? What does it feel like? Leave it to several brand new children's books, as well as a brand new graphic novel series to help us see the way. Joining us here live in studio, it's, it's really nice when we don't necessarily have to do what I refer to as the two squares on a screen thing, right? So he is joining us here in studio, and as it says on screen, just in case if I happen to forget, normally I've got a really good clear Rolodex memory here. You've seen him on Netflix's Alexa and Katie. You've also seen him on Parks and Recreation, film and television actor, artist, and children's book author and illustrator. He is the creator of the popular Louie and Bear graphic novel series, the brand new picture book as well, Bug Sandwich. They're all available now, courtesy of our friends and neighbors at Penguin Kids. One of the many ways that you can pledge your support for Brady Smith is by heading on over to Amazon.com, leaving five-star reviews for Louie and Bear in the Land of Anything Goes, Louie and Bear Bite Back, and Bug Sandwich, as well as Brady's other children's books, which we're going to be briefly discussing as well during this particular trolley stop. That is episode number 218 of the Children's Book Spotlight series by leaving a five-star review for Brady. You're letting him know that he's doing wonderful and much-needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and for those who love great children's books. The trolley actually, normally, you know, we travel out virtually. We use our imaginations, but we actually legitimately had to take a mode of transportation to get from San Diego to Hollywood. Joining us here in studio at the Third Wheel Podcast Studio, one of the featured guest panelists who's going to be co-headlining Building a Culture of Reading in Your Classroom this Saturday at Barnes & Noble Mira Mesa. We've got so much to talk about. And yes, there may even be a Save by the Bell reference here or there, because for those of you who don't know, Brady is also the husband of Tiffany Thiessen, who played Kelly Kapowski on Save by the Bell, and Valerie Malone on Beverly Hills 90210. But your merits stand out by themselves, good sir. Thank you for spending some time with us here as part of the kickoff of building a culture of reading in your classroom week. And it is good to be in your neighborhood, shall I say. Thanks for having me. I, John, I got to tell you, that was quite the monologue. I mean, <laughs> I'm impressed, man. You and, and no prompter. That as we was hear, smooth, no prompter. <laughs> smooth. You you covered all the bases and then some more. So good to be here, man. Thank you. 
Good to be here as well, too. For those of you who are new to our neighborhood, who are new to the Children's Book Spotlight series, one of the many ways that you can pledge your support for us here at the program, for us here at PR from the Heart, in addition to all of the incredible work that Brady is blasting off into the stratosphere for children, parents, families, educators, and those who love great children's books, you can subscribe to PR from the Heart's official YouTube channel. Join the more than 16,000 plus members of the PR from the Heart family. Those are our subscribers on YouTube as well. If this message Message, these messages that we are already discussing and sharing, especially the connecting theme of embracing your destiny. If you feel that this resonates with you, if you feel that this trolley stop needs to be shared with someone in need, someone who needs a little boost, a little pick-me-up, we encourage you to not only subscribe to Pierre from the Heart's official YouTube channel, but also share this very special trolley stop that you are currently enjoying. That is episode number 218 of the Children's Book Spotlight series. Brady, I'm, I'm really excited because the opportunity to be able to come here, have this conversation in person. We're always big on origin stories here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series. And there's always, when we're interviewing a children's book author and or illustrator, in this particular instance, both, there's multiple origin stories. But let's start off where it really began for you on your end of things. You've accomplished a lot in a relatively short period of time. You're still a fairly young man like myself as well, too. Where did it really all begin for you when you knew that a large, a large point, a large purpose of yours was meant to better the lives of children and to be able to get into the world of children's literature? Was it a specific series of circumstances for you or was it just that random happenstance on your end of things? Um, I'd say a series of events. My, my mom was an elementary school librarian and I've always been encouraged to draw my entire life. I mean, before I could even uh, have a desk of my own, I, my dad would put me on his desk and I would just draw. So I've always had it in me. My, my mom's always wanted me to do a book. Um, I graduated with a fine arts degree from a college in Texas. And for years I'd been kind of thinking about ideas, but I just never really had one that I felt was, had that oomph, if you will. And I always joke that the way the first book came about is our son was about a year old and I was pushing him on the swing in our yard and I was just doing that typical look at my phone with one hand pushing my son on the swing with the other and my beautiful wife opened up the window from the kitchen and yelled lovingly of course at me across the yard that I was missing it she's mm. like you're missing it and a light bulb went off. And that was how I wrote my first, or the idea behind my first children's book about, you know, a reversal of perspective instead of the kids looking at the phone, it's the parents missing out on what the kids are seeing on a daily basis, the everyday magic, because they're staring at their device. So that was book one, and it came out in 2019. And right now I'm working on my ninth book. It's incredible. And again, as I mentioned, a lot in a relatively short period of time. It's very easy for those who are watching episode number 218 of the Children's Book Spotlight series to think that Brady Smith, celebrity children's author, married to Tiffany Thiessen, made in the shade. Like you have the, the golden toilet, the recipe to world peace and all of that and then some. <laughs> I, I share know. this because we all navigate through some form <laughs> of contrast. In life, there's the challenges, the difficulties, the obstacles, the problems, the stressors, the troubles, the worries. Whether it be early on in your life, whether it be when you stepped into the world of children's literature, what are some of the noteworthy challenges and difficult uh, challenges and difficulties you experienced on your path, and what were some of the things that helped you to get through to the other side of those? Well, I think, like with anybody, uh, you hear no more than you hear yes. And it's basically perseverance. Um, you know, when you when you're in a creative field, uh, most of the time it is the word no, and especially as an actor. I mean, that was pretty much the word I heard more than any. Um, but I just never gave up, and I feel like if there's something that you love to do, there's no other option. You do it. And a lot of the times, uh, you won't let you won't have somebody let you do it. You have to do it on your own. Mm -hmm. um, that's the beauty of the books for me, as opposed to 
acting when there's so many other people involved, directors, producers, casting directors, you know, other actors. With the books, I can go into my studio, work on it by myself, and, and get it done. The fact that you are able to balance so many different things, and this is kind of a little bit of a multifaceted question, but starting off from the perspective of we all have the same precious currency. The most precious commodity that we have is time. Agreed. There's 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week, 365 days in a, in a year. When we have the leap year, there of, there of course is 366. Having wife, kids, family, career, you got to give yourself time for that, for, for self-love. We're, we're huge proponents on, you know, loving oneself here at the Children's Book Spotlight series. What are some of the things that have helped you to be able to keep things balanced and to keep yourself grounded amidst this fast-paced world, especially in the world of children's literature? It's a matter of like, you're talking about your current project and then you're writing the process of working on the next two or three things in the process. What are some of those things that are really key ingredients to help you stay grounded? Um, definitely my family keeps me grounded because there's, again, no other option. I mean, that's just the way it is. If you're the parent of young kids, they, they keep you in line uh, regardless. And, you know, we, we have a very wonderful, normal home environment. You know, my wife and I are home. We take the kids to school. We take them to sports. We bring them home. And uh, we eat dinner at the house. My wife will cook. I'll do the dishes. So it's already a very grounded atmosphere. The trick for me that I find is trying to wedge in that time, like you were saying, that precious, precious thing called time to find the ability to work. Because in a 24 hour time period, our days are very, very busy. You know, wake up, we have four dogs, we have 12 chickens. I mean, it's just immediately off to the races. Um, but what I try to do is carve out three to four hours a day to be creative, whether that's painting, drawing, or writing. Um, and four hours a day of creativity is, it's taxing and it's wonderful, but it's, it's you know, it's not easy. You have to commit to it. I also give you credit because you and Tiffany really care about each other. And in a world, especially in Hollywood, when relationships can go belly up very quickly or they're just very flash in, f flashes in the pan, so to speak, the care and the love that you share, like it's very clear, it's very palpable. When you see the photos that you share on Instagram, you know, especially here you are guys, you know, having summer adventures, just coming off the heels of a recent trip to Maine on your end of things, which I'm sure was, was incredible. Um, talk to us about your relationship with, with Tiffany because you guys seem so happy. She's the yin to your yang, your alpha to, to the omega. And especially for celebrities, you don't necessarily see that. And it's just really refreshing to be able to see that. And the fact that the both of you are utilizing your platforms for the highest and greatest good too. Thank you, John. Um, you know, above all, I'm very lucky because I have a wife like myself who our priority is family. So as long as you have that perspective, everything else I believe kind of falls into place because your number one goal is to, is to love one another, be kind to one another, and then raise healthy little people being the kids. Um, I, I, that's about as much thought as I put into it every day. I just try to do what uh, I feel is the right choice. And I think that's what, all we can do really is just love each other and try to do what's right. I wish I could say I had this grand scheme plan. <laughs> I don't. I just, I wake up, I'm like, how can I help my wife? What do we need to get done? Where are the kids going? And yeah, feed them healthy food. And again, the fact that you're doing your part to, you know, raise your children, like they're turning out great. This is just... We, we tend to see, especially like for those who gravitate to celebrities and Hollywood and things of that nature, it's always about, you know, this 
not necessarily going the way in which it's meant to. And it's just really refreshing to be able to, again, see you guys growing and thriving. And talk to us a little bit about, before we, we dive into your books momentarily, sure. talk to us about the importance of, you know, we all have platforms. Mm -hmm. Some people, they have larger platforms than others. But being able to, you know, Tiffany is very much into health and wellness and cooking and encouraging people to live longer, healthier, more fruitful lives. You help children as well as us as adults to reconnect to the inner child within us. You're using your platforms for the highest and greatest good in a day and age where a lot of people, it, it can just be about the clicks and the cells and the things of that nature. Why is that really important to you? Not only as a husband, as a father, as a children's author and illustrator, a, a fellow human being, a fellow neighbor of sorts. We use a lot of the Mr. Rogers lingo here in the mm -hmm. children's book spotlight series. Why is that really important to you? Um, utilizing my platform. I think that the way I look at things is there's enough dark, scary stuff out there in the world right now, especially for kids. I don't want to contribute that. So my books, I try to make the art very colorful, very festive, very whimsical. And I just want to tell stories that have a good message and kind of help the kids find that uh, fantastical place in their imagination where they can escape, you know, real life and go on a good adventure and enjoy a good story. That's, I mean, if I was to think about my role, I would probably go with that. I love that. Thanks. And, and the fact that, again, you really have the best of all of the worlds, because oftentimes when we interview a featured guest in the children's book Spotlight series, they are just a children's author or a middle grade author. And you cover the illustration and the authoring aspect. And there's, again, so much that we're going to be talking about. And then some here on episode number 218 of the children's book Spotlight series. Joining us is our featured guest here, Brady Smith. As you can tell, as it says here on the backdrop, film slash television actor, comma, artist, comma, and children's book author slash illustrator for those who are scoring and paying attention at home as well. You should. We encourage all of you, our listeners and viewers, our friends and neighbors, and of course, our fellow shining stars to head on over to amazon.com. You can purchase your copies of Louie and Bear in the Land of Anything Goes, Louie and Bear Bite Back as part of the Louie and Bear graphic novel series published by our friends and neighbors at Penguin Kids along with Bug Sandwich, Brady's new children's picture book. These are all now available in addition to the rest of Brady's books. One of the many ways you can pledge your support for Brady is by leaving a five-star review on Amazon, letting him know that he's doing wonderful and much-needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and for those who love great children's books. If you head on over to your favorite local library, your favorite children's and or independent bookstores, we like to say they are the pillars of our community. It's one of the calling cards here at PR from the heart that local libraries, children's and independent bookstores are the pillars of our community. If they do not stock their copies of Bug Sandwich, Louis and Bear in the Land of Anything Goes, and Louis and Bear Bite Back, make that kind recommendation. A little tip of the cap, let them know that you heard about Brady's work here on episode number 218 of the Children's Book Spotlight series. Specifically speaking, diving a little bit more into your work, I love the fact, I mean, it's hard to believe that now, thankfully, we're on the other side of the pandemic. Yeah. And, and I remember when your, when your first picture book came out with Tiffany, take us back in, you know, Doc Emmett L. Brown's Wayback Machine, the, uh, the DeLorean mm -hmm. of sorts, the, the kidlit DeLorean, if you want to classify it as is that. You had the opportunity to travel across the country and do it with someone that you love and you care about, your life partner, while also bringing children, parents, families together. Talk to us about that specific experience and really how that in many, in many respects served as a springboard where you said, you know what, I want to do, I want to do more of this. Sure. Uh, so we did a book tour. We did Good Morning America, The Today Show. We did a bunch of uh, book signings. And uh, it was just, like you said, it was with, you know, the person I love the most in the world besides my kids. And it was just a ball. Um, I don't know if I had a moment where I was like, this is what I want to start doing. It was kind of a natural progression where I just enjoyed being able to, I, I, I got to say like walking into a bookstore and just randomly seeing a kid reading a book that I made is one of the neatest feelings I've ever had professionally um, or, or just in general. It's just such a special, cool moment. So I just had more stories to tell 
thankfully the people at Penguin are interested in me telling more stories. And it's a good thing. It's you know it's a luxury being able to take my kids to school, pick them up from school, um, and be more present and involved. I mean that's what I think working on books has given me uh, just the ability to, to, to work, but to be around my family. One of the things that I also love about your book that you put out with Tiffany is the fact there's a lot of celebrity children's books and some of them are not that good. Yeah. And the fact that you actually put out something that had tangible value and quality and multiple heartfelt messages and themes throughout the course of the story. And, and I really feel that that's important. That kind of ties back and goes back to the whole thread of utilizing your platform for the highest and greatest good because it's like a very trendy thing now celebrities put out children's books because it's the cool and popular thing to do but there's more of a there's there's intentionality that you bring to them that's one of the things that that especially and we'll talk more about louis and bear both stories as well as bug sandwich momentarily but talk to us about the blend of intentionality and fun like you keep things very light very energetic very playful in this world, we as adults can take life way too seriously, right? It's a matter of we wake up and it's kind of like the, the old school Dunkin' Donuts commercials. There was the guy who woke up and says, time to make the donuts. So we got to wake up and it's like, you know, we- I we, thought about that so long. We take out the, you know, we, we take out the dog, right? And then we you know, might get a little bit of a morning stretch. You got to get the kids off to school and or off to summer camp. You have yourself some breakfast, you know, you fit in a good workout, you have your, your, your work day, you got to pay the tax. I mean, there's all these adulting responsibilities. Mm -hmm. could, you, could you talk to us about the thread of the intentionality, having something that really has a strong purpose and intention behind it, but also keeping things light and playful and fun and energetic? Because it's not only kids who are reading your books, but it's also parents, educators, grandparents, and many of those people, like we also have the inner child within us and we need these reminders to not just have the intentionality, but have that fun and that lightheartedness as well too. Right. You know, I, I joke with some of the other um, dads that, you know, every day is kind of like Groundhog Day, right? Where you wake up, feed the dogs, take the kids to school, come home, do all that stuff. The cool thing about being able to do art for me is that Everything in the day can be the same, but when I'm working on a new book or drawing or painting, every day is different for that period of time. You know, I'm not drawing the same thing every day. I'm drawing something different. Um, and my intentionality would be that whatever I am working on, be it the reader is a child or an adult, I want them to have that positive escapism where they can go somewhere else where they're not worrying about whatever's going on in the real world. That would be my goal. Um, so the stories are obviously with picture books, with children's books, there's always a lesson. Uh, but with the young reader graphic novels, it's really about fantastic, fantastical escapism. And just, you know, like I grew up watching Saturday morning ca cartoons and Same here. Star Wars was brand new and, you know, Land of the Lost and all these shows that for the period of time that they were on, I was there. I was in it. I was living it. I was experiencing it. And that's my goal for the books that I do, for the stories. I just want the kids to be completely immersed. And I really feel that that's something that is needed for our children, that they're able to, because there's different ways that kids can spend the most precious currency, which is time. And there's a lot of mm -hmm. devices and electronic doodads and things to be able to do if kids can do something to connect them with their imagination, that could connect them with their skills, their gifts, and their talents. And this is also one of the reasons why I really love your work as an artist. Before we dive into the books, which we're gonna, which we're gonna be doing momentarily, it's one of the favorite times here in a children's book spotlight series episode, by the way, when we crack the cover and dive into the pages of the brand new children's books that we're sharing here on the program, being an artist is all about creative expression. 
And this is really one of your calling cards that sets you amongst the pack from all of the others in the world of children's literature in terms of the illustrators and, and the artists. Your style is very unique. It's very lively. It's very heartfelt. It's very passionate. It's very you. Talk to us, if you could, about the, the importance of art being expression. In this day and age, even especially for our kids, they still want to fit in, right? You know, if you remember Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood and, and Fred would always say, like, I like you and I love you just the way that you are. And kids need to hear that. But simultaneously, at the same point, kids will do anything that they feel is necessary to fit in. And that could involve them not tapping into their authentic expression and just following the leader like the Pied Piper, so to speak. Talk to us about that thread about why it's paramount for you as an artist and a creator to be your authentic self and to inspire and empower kids to be able to do the same as well, whether it be through whatever artistic expression that it may be. You know, hearing you ask this question made me think of something where, you know, children are completely open to everything. Uh, they, they take everything in, they're sponges, and I feel like sometimes they are um, obsessed with the idea of doing something right or wrong and losing the innocence, the joy of just being creative. Um, so what I try to do is when I draw or paint or just kind of make art with my kids, I don't let, I, I don't let there be an eraser anywhere near us because what ends up happening is they will spend more time erasing and correcting what they want to create as opposed to just letting it be and taking the ride and figuring it out along the way. I think the neatest thing about art, at least for me, is a lot of the time when I start a book or start a painting, I don't necessarily know where it's going to go. I just kind of, you know, you speak about trolley and train. I just hop on the train and let it lead me wherever it's going. And I feel like most of the time, the ideas I come back with from that trip are better than anything I could have preconceived. So that's what I kind of do. I, I think Picasso said it when he, I mean, I'm going to butcher exactly what he said, but basically it was, you know, his goal as an artist is to be as free as a child mm. when he, whenever he's doing anything art related. And I just love that um, because, you know, that's when it's at its purest form. And Very true. I think it's just the best. So I, that would be the best answer I could give you for that. I know it kind of went a little bit off base, but I think just being open and letting the art take you where the art wants to take you. It's interesting that you mention that because one of my uh, favorite <clears throat> authors who's a beloved spiritual teacher, New York Times bestselling author, Dr. Wayne Dyer, and he would talk about when he would write his books that in essence it was more or less this presence. Some people will refer to it as spirit, just moving through you, where in essence you are the vessel, where in essence it's just the creative force that is moving through you, and you just happen to be the one that's doing the mm -hmm. doodling, the drawing, the sketching, the writing. And the cool thing is, is that this is again like, you know, when, when you check out Brady's Instagram page, you can really see that he is his authentic self. And this is why like your kids love you and your wife loves you and the world of children's literature loves you is because you are your authentic self. And that's a really important message, especially as we're heading into the back to school season and kids are like, am I going to fit in? How am I gonna make friends? I'm stepping into a new grade, I'm going to a new school. Just being your authentic natural self, that's one of the things that will help you to be able to embrace your destiny. See how things come full circle here on the Children's Book Spotlight. That's we, impressive. Yes, we, we are emanating from the Third Wheel Podcast studio here in Hollywood, California. Joining us is our featured guest, in case you can't tell. He is Brady Smith, film and television actor, artist, and children's book author and illustrator, and one of the co-headliners of Building a Culture of Reading in Your Classroom PR from the Hearts flagship back-to-school themed event that is taking place this Saturday at Barnes & Noble Mira Mesa in San Diego, California. We'll be talking about more of that momentarily as well. 
We encourage all of you, our listeners and viewers, our friends and neighbors, and of course our fellow Shining Stars to head on over to Brady's official website, which we've included in the description below in addition to Amazon.com. Purchase and enjoy your copies of the Louis and Bear graphic novel series, Louis and Bear in the Land of Anything Goes, Louis and Bear Bite Back, and Bug Sandwich. They are all now available courtesy of our friends and neighbors at Penguin Kids who had the opportunity to spend some quality time with at the ALA Annual Conference and Exhibition, also in San Diego, California, just a few short weeks ago. If you head on over to your favorite local library, your favorite children's and or independent bookstore, remember they are the pillars of our community. If they do not stock their copies of Bug Sandwich and the Louis and Bear graphic novel series, make that kind recommendation. Let them know that you heard about them right here on episode number 218 of the Children's Book Spotlight series. And again, if Amazon is your preferred online vehicle of your choosing, be sure to leave a five-star review for Louis and Bear in the Land of Anything Goes, Louis and Bear Bite Back, and Bug Sandwich. By leaving a five-star review, you can let Brady know that he's doing wonderful and much-needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and for those who love great children's books. We are now set to dive inside of the pages of and crack the cover and dive into the pages of First Things First, the Louis and the Bear graphic novel series. Little known fact, before my time as a publicist for children's authors and before hosting the children's book spotlight series, I hosted a popular wrestling radio show called Monday Night Mayhem. Oh, I did oh, it for over 10 years. Okay. Traveled across the country, five WrestleManias, interviewing everyone from Hulk Hogan, Nature Boy Ric Flair, wow. Stone Cold Steve Austin, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, CM Punk, Kevin Owens, Cody Rhodes, anyone who's anyone in the world of professional wrestling and sports and entertainment. That landed up dissolving. I said, you know what, it, it ran its course. Great experience, but that was in the uh, the fall into the winter of 2013. But it's so interesting how wrestling always just seems to circle <laughs> back in in some way, shape, or That's form. That's funny. When I'm introduced to Louis and Bear, and I'm like, of course it has some kind of a wrestling theme, wrestling connection. One of the expressions that we use here in the children's book spotlight series, we never like to give away the whole kitten caboodle. That's like an old vaudeville, vaudevillian term. I, I, I feel that I'm an old soul, even though I was born in 81. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, you don't necessarily hear the term, you know, uh, the whole kitten caboodle and not giving away the whole kitten caboodle. This is, this is a graphic novel series that stands out in many different unique ways. Before talking about the stories themselves, there's something that sets graphic novels apart amongst children's books. Within the last several years, there's been a higher demand for graphic novel series because it really not only encourages kids to connect with the love and joy of reading, but it has that comic book flair as well too. It's a different style. The books are a little bit longer. Why did you make the decision to say, you know what, Louis and Barrett obviously could have been anything. It could have been picture book. It could have been, uh, you know, a, a YA, but you said, all right, graphic novel series. So what was it about the graphic novel that really said, this is, this is the best fit for Louis and Bear? Well, I, when I decided I wanted to do a young reader graphic novel, I didn't even have Louis and Bear yet. I, uh, went into my studio and just, I did, I took a lot of walks I crumpled up a lot of paper and threw it into the trash can. I mean, I had idea after idea after idea. And I always, when I start a story, I try to think about my younger self. What would, what would I enjoy reading? What, what would be fun and adventurous and cool? Um, and then I came up with Louie and Bear. And, and then, you know, you develop, you do the, the character design. I mean, they, these guys went through so many different color palettes and, you know, sizes and all this stuff. I and can then, imagine. You know, it, there's a lot of work that goes into it. I mean, I, I, I joke that Louie and Bear, I mean, I spent, I mean, I have a relationship with these characters. You know, I spent so much time with them. I, I care about them. And I know that sounds a little bit silly, but I, I truly do. I want them to go off and live wonderful little, you know, lives and, and be read by a bunch of people and bring them joy. So... I felt like growing up, I loved Calvin and Hobbes. I loved, you know, the the young reader graphic novel is basically a gateway for kids to get into reading actual novels. And I just thought it was a good fit. And it's a lot longer than a picture book. So I could tell a better, I don't want to say better, but a, a, a longer adventure. 
Correct. And there, there's obviously the opportunity for more creativity, more mm-hmm. more artwork as well, too. A lot of artwork. It's it, it's great to see the fact, because, you know, oftentimes when you have a graphic novel, there can be one, and then there's two, and this is really picked up steam. It's one of the more popular graphic novel series that's out there in the world of children's literature. For those who are being introduced to Louis and Bear for the first time, and they hear, okay, in the land of anything goes... That, that that could technically be like the microcosm of Hollywood, because here we are in a, in a land uh, yeah. where truly anything yeah. can can go, right? Yep. Between Louis and Bear and the land of anything goes, Louis and Bear bite back. For those who are learning about these stories for the first time, what are some of the specific things that readers can expect, can enjoy, and most importantly, take away? Because one of the things that I really love about the series is is that you can go back to it. You can go back to it again and again. It's not just the book where it's like, okay, I'm done reading it. And if that be the purpose, so be it. But kids can go back again and again. And just from some of the educators that have had the chance to talk to parents as well, too, they're clamoring for more. And that's always a good feeling as a creator. Hey, that's great to hear. Where where it's like, okay, then, you know, we're on to something. Sure. Um, I think that the the two words that come to my mind when I explain Louie and Bear is friendship and imagination. Because ultimately, it's about two best friends, and they're just trying to make it through adolescence and just, you know, live their best little child lives and the adventure that they go on. Um, As far as the art and as far as being able to go back to the books, there's a lot lot of the illustrations, a lot of the art. You know, there's the main focus going on, and then there's a bunch of fun little stuff happening behind the scenes be that, you know, B plot or just illustrations. So I like to do art where people have to look at it for a minute, if not longer, and they'll always see something new. To me, that's fun because it keeps kids engaged. But uh, yeah, Louie Louis and Bear, you know, I wanted it to feel like how I felt when I was a kid and I got on my, my BMX bike and I just took off into the neighborhood and just discovered stuff and played and you know that to me is childhood and that's what I wanted these characters to experience and then readers I I also love about this is readers are able to discover a lot about Louis and Bear while also discovering more things about themselves yeah because the stuff that Louis goes through more more Bear's kind of like just this wonderful sweet huggable you know character that all of a sudden can find himself with the ability to talk And he's just incredibly happy about that, right? Like he's just, I don't know. I I jokingly uh, think of him as like the sweetest Chris Farley version out there, right? Like he's just a good time to be around and and just wants to have fun. And Louis is is a normal little boy who's just experiencing... You know everything that comes with growing up, as far as uh, insecurities and anxiety and joy and sadness, and trying to be liked by friends, and you know, just basically growing up. I mean, I have this uh, luxury of having young kids in my house, and they uh, are going through stuff that that Louis is. That's cool. And, and the fact that I'm sure that, that your kids have probably been able to learn a lot along the way, and maybe some of the things that they're moving through, it's like, Dad, you know, what's the advice? And you can say, check out this book. You know what's funny, John? The, my kids are, and my wife, like I'm, I'm lucky that they are my biggest uh, critics, but also they praise me the most as well so uh i i will throw ideas out to tiff and the kids and i'm like what about this and they'll be like no you know (laughs) but then when i do have an idea that i think is good and i share it and and they're on board so it's it's nice it's like i i have my own um editors and critics that live in the same house with me that kind of will help me guide a story if you will they're, they're kind of like a hybrid of a support system and, uh, gosh, what were the names of those Muppets that were up, those those old Yeah, yeah, yeah. That That's actually a Stetler great... Statler and Waldorf. Yeah, those guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It, that's really funny. Um, but I'm grateful for it because, you know, you want to you wanna create something that's to the best of your ability 
And when you're working on it and you're so close to it, it's almost like you're a horse with blinder, blinders on and you need to get that outside perspective. So it's beneficial to have, you know, a nine-year-old critic looking over your shoulder as you're at your desk. Well, also one of the things that I can definitely feel from what it is you're sharing, like they want the best for you. hundred percent. And there is, you know, when we have our partners that come onto our path and we have kids that then come into our lives, they will, they know the right buttons to push, but from especially the aspect of they want us to become the highest and best versions of ourselves. Right. And sometimes that will come from loving and nurturing support. And oftentimes it'll be like, Hey, here's how it is. Right. And you got to kind of feel into it and say, you know, what is, you know, what, what is, what is this teachable moment right here? What is it that I'm meant to learn? How can it help me evolve and really sharpen myself sure. in the process? Bug sandwich. It, it's a very, it's a very interesting story because like when you think of bugs, it's this matter of like, you know, during the summertime, you get your mosquitoes and you see the little fruit flies. And when people think of bugs, it's not necessarily the most, you know, appealing thing, so, yep. so to speak. Right. But the fact that, again, with with your artwork, with your illustrations, with the story arc, especially, I really like the story because it, it kind of, you know, when now when I think of bugs, the first thing that comes to mind is your book. It's not like, oh, there's this little fruit fly that I see right here, and what is it doing here kind of thing. Obviously, again, picture book, graphic novels, a little bit different. Talk to us about the the creative flow. Take us really behind the scenes of what it was like to be able to bring this book to life and some of the feedback that you, you've had the chance to talk with kids, parents, families, educators. What's it been like sharing with this story, knowing that it's a separate project, unique unto itself, from the Louis and Bear? You know, picture books are always uh, a lot more, they're, they're very rewarding, but they're also very challenging because I have a shorter period of time to tell a full story. I, I basically, Louis and Bear, I believe is 160 pages each of the books and Bug Sandwich being a picture book is 32 pages. Um, the origin of this particular picture book, Bug Sandwich, is my wife and my son both have, I guess you could consider, uh, sweeter blood than my daughter and I. They are always hassled by bugs. Always, always, always. And Harper, my daughter, I should say our daughter, and myself, we're, we're rarely bugged by bugs. So I had this idea, uh, bugs just are so colorful and they're so unique from one another and there's so many different types of them. I just thought it would be a lot of fun to draw. And, you know, kids are fascinated by little things and bugs are one of them. Uh, so that was basically what made me decide to do this book. And then, you know, ultimately children's books have to have a message. And the, mes the message of this book is, you know, treat people, I think, by the way, this is the golden rule. And if we all did this, the world would be a much happier place. Treat people the way you would like to be treated. And basically that's the lesson of a bug sandwich. And it's just a lot of, there's a wacky road to get to that message. And uh, I'm glad that you hit on that thread as well, too. We very much have ESP because when it comes, like, if you would just take a look at the cover art of Bug Sandwich, you may not necessarily think that that really is one of the key themes, messages, morals of the story. It really reminds us to not necessarily judge something. Not saying there's people out there that judge your work, but there's people in life that judge us all the time and they can just look at the surface or look at what we had, what we went through previously and not know the full story. But when you take the time to get to know someone, right? like I've had the chance, you know, you know, preparing for building a culture of reading in your classroom, I've gotten to know Louie and Bear. Sure. I've gotten to know Bug Sandwich. I've gotten to know you a little bit better. And when we take the time to do that, we have a much more profound appreciation we learn that much more. There's those connecting threads mm -hmm. between ourselves and our fellow neighbors that we come into contact with, which is great. And, and I also love the ability to, to pivot to different kinds of things where it's like, okay, it's time to have the Louis and Bear hat on. Great, it's time to have the Bug Sandwich hat on. That's great. We just celebrated Shark Week not that long ago. You've got your shark book that's obviously out as well too. So it's a matter of, and then when it comes time to just doing straight, you know, straight artwork, then you got that hat on. The ability to pivot back and forth as well too. 
Some of the praise for Bug Sandwich, I want to mention this, uh, courtesy of our friends and neighbors at Kirkus in the School Library Journal. Starting off with Kirkus, the hilariously over-the-top story will earn giggles and nods of recognition from the bug verse. With loud colors and a zany, chaotic tone, the cartoon art is delightful. That's from Kirkus. And then from sweet. School Library Journal, Smith's crisp storytelling will have children on the edge of their seats and the ebullient drawings never fail to engage. That's that's the word of choice here, ebullient, on the children's book spotlight series. If you had that on your children's book spotlight series, uh, linguistic bingo card, you <laughs> score a trip to the Third Wheel Podcast Studio here in Hollywood. Uh <laughs> Quick, fun, and visually delightful, this tale will be enjoyed for the ick factor and the humor. When you, especially in LA and Hollywood, Mm -hmm. a lot of people pay attention to the reviews, to the critics, you know, whether it be if you're an actor or an actress, it's about, you know, Entertainment Tonight, Access Hollywood, Variety, uh, LA Times, and the world of children's literature. It's Kirkus, it's Publishers Weekly, it's the School Library Journal. Hearing that feedback, what does what, like you're you're a very humble guy. This is one of the things that really also sets you apart amongst the pack, especially when it comes to being a celebrity children's author. When you hear that feedback, especially now years being in the industry, what does that mean to you? I mean, it's nice. I liked the word ebullient. That's a word that doesn't get enough uh, love. It's true. So that was cool. <laughs> I, you know, John, I, you keep. You just have to keep a level head. And, and, and I think by treating people the way that you want to be treated, by having that mentality, I feel like that just is kind of my, the way I go through life. Um, you're going to have good reviews, you're going to have bad reviews, and, that's, and it's just a review. I mean, it's just somebody's opinion, and, and they are welcome to that opinion, but I try not to let that affect me. You know what I mean? Uh, as the old saying goes, let it be water off a duck's back. That's kind of how I roll. Um, I'm happy. I love my wife. I love my kids. There's nothing that somebody can really say that is going to take that away from me. And since that's my priority, then everything else is just sticks and stones. You stay not only grounded within life, but also within yourself. And eventually we all, this this ties into the universal thread of, you know, going back to the calling card, the universal theme of this children's book spotlight series episode, and that is embracing your destiny. And it's really vital in order to be able to fulfill your life purpose, to fulfill your destiny, you got to embrace who you are. And I think it's really important because there, there's a lot of adults that watch the children's book spotlight series. Parents, caregivers, teachers, principals, librarians, as we like to say, those who love great children's books. And again, we all have the inner child within ourselves. We always love to be able to provide some useful information, whether it be tips, tools, strategies. When it comes to the ability to not only embrace your destiny, but to embrace yourself, For those who are struggling out there, whether it be a parent, whether it be a grandparent who maybe has some unprocessed, you know, childhood trauma or emotion, or maybe someone who just wants to be a better parent and their kids are moving through some sort of a challenge, whether it be small, medium, or supersize, so to speak, what are some words of encouragement and support that you would like to be able to share that can help all of ourselves individually and collectively to be able to embrace ourselves more and thus have a greater chance of embracing and fulfilling our destiny. Wow, that is a... Uh, it's, like a, a six, it's like a 60 minutes kind of question. Yeah, that's a big, <laughs> that's a big question. I, uh, first off, I don't feel like I'm qualified, if you will, to tell somebody how to be their best self or their best destiny. I can only speak for myself and say that I approach each day with kindness and trying to think about others first. Um, It's almost like a kind of a little vacation too. If you put people before you, then you're always not thinking about yourself. And it's it's a sweet way to go through life. It's a kind way to go through life. So I think just approaching being kind and putting other people first. I know that it's not like that all the time, but I, I put a, I, I really put a great effort into that. Um, you know, like I, I put 
my wife and I put our children to bed every night. We say nightly prayers, and one of them is just, you know, help me be my best self. And we keep it very simple and light and try to make it about treating people the way that you'd like to be treated. I know I keep going back to that, but it's it's it truly is, I feel like, such a simple way to think about things and to do things. Well, that's it, it goes back to one of our deepest sources of inspiration here on the program. And one of the reasons why we, we do this work is in, to blaze our own trail, but to remember the, the life and the memory and the legacy of Fred Rogers. When he would always, whether it be through his time on the neighborhood or when he toured the country at different college talks, commencement addresses, and so on, he would just talk about the importance of kindness. Yeah. To be kind, to yeah. be kind, to be kind. And that is, that is a currency that is everlasting. That is a currency that will always have value, and it is absolutely free, right? right? You don't. It doesn't cost anything to be kind to someone else, and it's one of the greatest gifts that you can give yourself. And the more that you are kinder, right, you're able to fill your cup. In essence, my Mr. Dress Up mug for all of our Canadian friends and neighbors, and for those who are huge fans of Care Bears. That's Brady's mug right here on episode number 218 of the Children's Book Spotlight series. When you fill your cup up with kindness. For yourself, you have the ability to serve from the overflow, even more so, which is great. We're beginning to wind down our time here at the Third Wheel Podcast Studio here in Hollywood, California, with our featured guest here on episode number 218 of the Children's Book Spotlight series, film and television actor, artist, and children's book author and illustrator, and one of the co-headliners of PR from the Hearts, Building a Culture of Reading in Your Classroom, our flagship back-to-school-themed event for parents, educators, and kids this year across San Diego. We'll be talking about that more so momentarily. We have been fully immersed in his brand new books, the Louis and the Bear graphic novel series, In the Land of Anything Goes, and Louis and Bear Bite Back, as well as his brand new picture book, Bug Sandwich. They're all now available, courtesy of our friends and neighbors at Penguin Kids. One of the many ways you can pledge your support for Brady is by leaving a five-star review on Amazon, if that is your preferred online vehicle of your choosing. And if you feel called and guided to do so, of course, you can leave five-star reviews for Louis and Bear in the Land of Anything Goes, Louis and Bear Bite Back, Bug Sandwich, and the rest of Brady's children's books in the process. By leaving five-star reviews, you can pledge your support and let Brady know that he's doing wonderful and much-needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and for those who love great children's books. Of course, if you head on over to your favorite local library, your favorite children's and or independent bookstore, as we like to say, they are the pillars of our community here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series and PR from the Heart. If you do not see them stock their copies of Louis and Bear in the Land of Anything Goes, Louis and Bear Bite Back, and Bug Sandwich, you can make that kind recommendation. Let them know that you heard about them here on episode number 218 of the Children's Book Spotlight series. We've also included Brady's official website, his official Instagram page below to keep the conversation going post Children's Book Spotlight series as well too as we begin to shift gears to the back to school season. That's the perfect segue because I'm super excited to have you be a part of building a culture of reading in your classroom. This year's event is headline. We've got an incredible kidlit dais that we have Sharon and Randy Hampson. If you remember, skin a marinky dinky dink, skin a marinky do. We love you. See, we kind of put it into the two four three instead of the one four three. Sharon Hampson, of course, one third of the iconic children's music group. Sharon Lois and Bram. Her daughter, Randy, who is the manager of the group between them as well as Bram Morrison, they have launched into the world the three brand new children's books from Penguin Random House Canada, Skinnamarink, One Elephant Went Out to Play, and Peanut Butter and Jelly, inspired by their timeless hits. Of course, if you're a child of the 80s or a child of the 90s, you remember the Sharon Lois and Bram Elephant Show that are celebrating now their 40th anniversary this fall. So in addition to Sharon and Randy Hampson, in addition to Brady, one of our featured children's author clients here at PR from the Heart Award-winning children's author, Alyssa Schwartz, the creator of the new award-winning children's book, This Day I Hold Dear. We are all going to be at Barnes & Noble Mira Mesa in San Diego this upcoming Saturday, August the 3rd from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific. Uh, You know, obviously there there will be people that will be watching this episode leading into and then after the event as well too. 
to have the opportunity to be a part not only of, uh, of, of this event. I know you've had the chance to get to know Sharon and Randy's work a little bit more and to enjoy Alyssa's work a little bit more. Could you share with us a little bit about the experience of being a part of this event? Because one of the things that I, that I, one of the reasons why I wanted to have you be a part of this event is you're about not only sharing the good word, but also aligning yourself with other kindred spirits, with other empowered souls, so to speak, to better the lives of children. And what other better way that we can do this, especially we're still, you know, on the other side of the pandemic, thankfully, but we're still doing our part as parents and caregivers and custodians to increase literacy, both in the classroom and out of the classroom and at home so that kids can have a greater chance of success and we can kind of make up for the lost time during the pandemic. So could you share with us your level of excitement as we are now T minus several days away from building a culture of reading in your classroom and what it's going to be like to, to be a part of the event? I'm super excited. I mean, like you said, we're just going to be a bunch of kindred spirits up there that care about books, that care about bringing joy to kids. Anything that I could do to get a kid to read or look at art and not have them staring at a certain electrical device, I'm a big fan of. So it's going to be nice just to get a, a group of people who care about all that kind of joyful, artistic storytelling things and uh, spend some time together. It's, it's awesome, too, because if you would have, let's say if we would have had this conversation so many years ago, it's just so interesting how these different worlds intersect my life. So, as I mentioned, huge fan, long time, you know, Mr. Rogers neighborhood, everything for me. And then literally four, close to five years ago, David Newell, who played Mr. McFeely, Speedy Delivery. We know him and we love him as David Newell, but we also remember him and love him as Mr. McFeely, Mr. Rogers neighborhood. We end up coming together and we co-host the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast, which is the sister program of the Children's Book Spotlight series, where David and I, we deliver heartfelt reviews from the newest children's books that are available, that are on the market from the shining stars in the world of children's literature. So you have this Mr. Rogers neighborhood component, and then you have Sharon Lois and Bram come in. This is like, you know, childhood memories activated, and then we land up connecting, and then it's like, oh, wait a minute, you're married to Tiffany Thiessen, and like one of my favorite shows growing up was Saved by the Bell. Like, you know, inner child me is totally like rocking it right now. <laughs> Where, again, it's just like if you would high five yourself if you were a kid and you were with you right I, I'm, I'm totally doing that right now as, <laughs> as we speak. But this really connects to the thread of, we talked about embracing yourself, but really the inner child aspect, the inner child, the teenage self. I don't necessarily want to turn this into like, you know, Dr. Laura, Dr. Phil or anything like that. But it's really important because th those are really some of our most fun elements mm -hmm. and to be able to connect with those things that are are, are that our inner child still loves and that our child growing up used to enjoy again for me again you know, mr rogers neighborhood sharon lewis and bram say by the bell could you really speak to that specific thread as well too especially for all of the adults that are watching out right now the importance of really having that strong relationship with with your inner child as we're heading into the back to school season you know the fun thing about Right now, my, I should say, our kids being so young is I'm getting to relive all the stuff that I loved when I was a kid, and I'm getting to kind of live vicariously through my kids as they discover what they love, if you will. Um, Star Wars was a huge deal for me. My son could kind of care less, so it's a little heartbreaking at times. In fact, I joke that when my son is really mad at me, He'll say, Dad, I don't like Star Wars. And I'm like, ugh, right to the heart. But, um, you know, I think I told you earlier, my daughter is watching Saved by the Bell with my wife. They're watching it together. So my wife is getting to see a show that she was on, you know, many, many years ago. And it's funny because a lot of the stuff she's like, oh, my gosh, I remember that. Or she doesn't remember that. And I also, I think I told you earlier, and this is through no fault of my own, but I just, Saved by the Bell wasn't my thing. I still have not seen uh, any episodes of Saved by the Bell. I, I just haven't. I was outside <laughs> riding my bike and catching turtles in the ditch. I don't know what I was doing, but I wasn't watching Saved by the Bell. So, 
you know, uh, I'm introducing my kid to Calvin and Hobbes, my kids to Calvin and Hobbes, which is fun. So I, yeah, there's, cool. but there also, there's so much stuff now out that we did not have when we were kids. I mean, the streaming and the constant new IP that's just in their face every day. I mean, I remember when I would, I mean, same with you, John, when we were growing up, you'd have to wait a week to see something. And if you missed it, then you'd have to wait another week yep. unless you had a VCR, which a lot of people didn't have at yep. the time. So, or you'd have to wait until the reruns when like the regular season yeah. was done and then they'd have the reruns come yeah. back. I mean, uh, not to get just totally about Star Wars, but I remember after a Star Wars movie, you'd have to wait four years to the next one. Yep. And it was brutal as a kid. So a lot of the things that I think maybe uh, subconsciously has me sitting here today is I would go home after seeing a movie or Saturday morning cartoons or whatever I was watching, and I would continue the story. So I would continue, if I saw Thundercats, for example, I would continue that episode and I would just take eight and a half by 11, uh, you know, copying paper and staple it together and just make my own books. I think I made, I saw Jaws when I was little. It's still my favorite movie. I'm a big fan of sharks. I think you mentioned I have a shark book. Um, I, I would continue the Jaws stories. I think I made it up to like Jaws 49. Oh, good heavens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my parents kept them all, which is a hoot because it was all drawn in pencil and just on, you know, copying white eight and a half by 11 paper. But I did that all the time. And I think that's what, I mean, that was my childhood, you know, riding bikes and drawing. Going back to that Saved by the Bell thread, I feel, I feel <laughs> you, if anything, when I can like, see you're just blown away. When by the like fact you're that. cutting the lawn, I, I would figure if anything, if there's one takeaway, you'd just be going beep, 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 yeah, beep, no. beep, 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 go Bayside, because that was the little, the little anthem, so to speak. Just that little, just at least we were one or two references, but. <laughs> the only reason I know what that was that you just did is yep. because I saw it while my wife and daughter were re-watching the episodes. Really funny story. When my daughter, I should say our, I keep doing that. It's my wife and I's children. When they, when she was in kindergarten, I guess another little girl came up to her and was like, your mommy's on a TV show. Da, 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 da. And, you know, our daughter had, had no idea what Saved by the Bell was. You know, mom was mom. And at the time, my wife had a, had a cooking show called Dinner at Tiffany's. So my daughter's response to that little girl was, no, 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 my, mom, my mom's a cooker. She thought she just cooked on TV. And then when she came home and asked Tiff about it, Tiff was like, you know, I, I was on a show when I was younger. It was called Say by the Bell. And Harper was like, can I watch it? And we showed her a little, I don't, I don't even remember, it might have been on YouTube, a little clip. And to see our daughter watch her mom... <laughs> <laughs> as a child because if you think about it when you look at your parents you're looking at still photography probably pretty grainy yep you know the development and all the technology wasn't necessarily there so they weren't great pictures and for a kid to see their mom as a kid moving breathing talking it was like watching the gerbil fall off the wheel. Like I could just see my daughter's <laughs> brain like, what? And it was, a, it was a fun, it was a really fun moment. And I thought about that later. I was like, wow, that had to have been a real trip for her to see her parent as a kid. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, it's, no, it's, I, it's just... one of my favorite stories. I still haven't watched Saved by the Bell. I still haven't seen 90210. Um, but I know a lot of people love those shows and, they express that love to my my wonderful wife when you know when, when we're out and about. So I know it means a lot. Those shows mean a lot to a lot of people. They do, and and this is a matter of it. It, it also it goes back to that theme of embracing your destiny, but embracing yourself. And, and I know that there's there, there's a lot of people who are part of iconic television shows. Some people will embrace it, 
and some people will try to kind of push it down. And then I know this was kind of one of the one of the themes of the new uh, the new Brad Pack documentary that came out. And Andrew, yeah, we watched and, and, that. And Andrew McCarthy for many years was like, no, and you know, if he was Russian, he'd say yet, yet no. And he's like, you know what? Like, it's time to embrace this. It's time to have a conversation about this as well too. And before we we officially begin to wind down our time, you know, and a little interesting note. So Dennis Haskins, who played Mr. Belding on Say by the Bell. When I was doing my wrestling radio show, Monday Night Mayhem, there was a little campaign that was through social media. There was a point in time where Monday Night Raw, the flagship program of the WWE, the WWE soon to be on Netflix to start off the new year. Um, I was actually spearheading the campaign to help him become the Raw general manager. Oh, wow. And I was friends with him for a couple of years. So it's just so interesting how things come full circle. Undoubtedly in life... Everything is, we learn each and every day. School, in many respects, is still ongoing. Once we're done with grammar school, we have high school. When we're done with high school, we have college. And then if we want to achieve further academia, we can do that. But in many respects, life is a school. Earth is a school. I'm curious to note, as we begin to wind our, down our time together here at the Third Wheel Podcast Studio, what has the process of creating these books and Louis and Baron Bug Sandwich. What has these books, what have these characters taught you about yourself and taught you about life? Great question. I think uh, ultimately that you can do whatever you set your mind to. Because I had never done a picture book and I had never done a young reader's graphic novel. I had, I'd, I guess I'd put in the, the quote, training, uh, just drawing my whole life. But I remember when I came up with a story and then you pitch it to your agent and the agent takes us to the publishing houses and then the publisher likes the idea and says, yeah, go, go ahead and make the book. I remember this overwhelming feeling of like wearing sandals and looking up at Mount Everest about to climb up there. I had no idea how to do it. But uh, again, back to the word that I think we used at the very beginning of this interview is perseverance and just sitting down and uh, believing in yourself and doing your best and, and taking that train ride and getting it done. There's a perfect quote that came to mind when I was preparing for our time here together. And uh, of all people, we want to attribute this to the Roman philosopher Seneca. This is the first thing that maybe we're quoting the work of Seneca here on the Children's Book Spotlight series. But it's an expression that is utilized regularly. And it is luck is when preparation meets opportunity. I love that. Yeah. And, and you have to be able to know when to, you know, share your essence and strike while the iron is hot. It, yeah. It's just a matter of when you're a farmer and you keep planting the <clears throat> seeds and you water them and you tend to them. You don't know when the crop is going to flourish, but you have to trust and pray and affirm that it will. And the same thing when it comes to blacksmiths. They keep doing the blacksmith thing, you know, thousand strikes and more so. And then eventually they get to where the blacksmith wants to be. Yep. When you have bamboo, it eventually can take years, if not even longer, for the bamboo to just go. Phew. But eventually you get to that tipping point, so to speak. And then you're on the other the other side of what I refer to as the rainbows and gumdrops energy. And mm -hmm. this is when you find Louis and Bear in the Land of Anything Goes, Louis and Bear Bite Back, and Bug Sandwich. The two ways that we always close out every children's book spotlight series episode. In many respects, we've mentioned his name once or twice or thrice, Mr. Rogers. Huge proponents, huge fans of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. In many respects, Fred did this during his time on the program. He also did this when he was out and about in neighborhoods across the country, in communities, whether it be... And he always kept the time, whether it be 15 seconds, 30 seconds, or a full minute. He also did this when he was at college commencement speeches, but most notably when he received his Lifetime Achievement Award at the Daytime Emmy shortly before he passed from stomach cancer. I saw that. And he encouraged us to remember those who helped love us into being. Mm -hmm. And that was his way of saying, you know, remember those people who were kind to us, who showed us the golden rule, treat others who treat others, treat to, to treat ourselves as we want to treat other people and vice versa. And, and reminding us of our creativity, our inherent skills, our gifts, our worth, our talent. Who are some of the people that you would like to publicly recognize here in episode number 218 of the children's book spotlight series that have helped love you Brady Smith into being? Wow, man, that's a beautiful question. That actually emotionally affected me hearing that. Um, 
My parents, my mom and dad, and my wife, they've always been incredibly supportive and and always had my back. Um, my parents' dream for me was nothing um, gigantic, if you will. It was, it was just like to live a happy life and to work if you if you have the ability to work for yourself and to be your own boss because you will have time to enjoy and it's your time so definitely my mom and dad my mom always wanted me to write a children's book and she both both my parents but they just get the biggest kick out of uh you know giving my books to other people and having me write you know personalize them for friends and friends grandbabies and so I think and my my wife is always she's the first one to tell me that she doesn't think my idea is awesome but she's also the very first one to tell me that the idea is phenomenal so my parents and my wife those would be the three I've, I've had wonderful teachers along the way but the three that I just mentioned have been there with me the whole time I appreciate you sharing that. Thank you. That was a great question. I mean, I, I, I feel like I had a tear pop up in the corner of my eye when we're, you asked uh, that. We're all about connecting to our, uh, our, our, not only our truest selves, but to really connect with our emotions or feelings, especially as, as men. It's important that we express our emotions and feel our feelings because we can be tough, yet we can be soft and vulnerable mm -hmm. at, at the same point in time. And, and to paraphrase the words of Fred, you know, those, you know, whether those people are near or far whether they're still with us walking this earthly plane or shining down from heaven, they're smiling on you, knowing the fact that you are making a profound impact, an indelible impact on the lives of children, parents, families, educators, those who love great children's books, and then some. You've probably been wondering, John, what in the heck have we been doing with the genie lamp here? Normally I get to hold the genie lamp because the majority of our children's book spotlight series episodes are remote, but now I can kind of let the cat out of the bag. We have a little segment to close out the program that we call Three Wishes. So we okay. go back to the year 1992. We remember the, because we're huge Disney buffs in addition to Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood buffs here in the children's book Spotlight series. We remember the late Robin Williams. We yep. remember how he voiced the genie of the lamp. And this, the Disney magic reminds us, and being in Hollywood, even as well, too, where, where dreams can come true. You know, I had to drive past, a, you know, Disneyland to get out here from San Diego to Los Angeles to Hollywood. We can bring to form to and to form and shape our dreams, our desires, our goals, our ambitions. We have the ability to fill to fulfill our own wishes. And we have the ability to help those that come onto our path, whether it be friends, family, colleagues, neighbors, those who we're called to uh, to bless and be of service to. So I actually haven't had the chance to do it. I want you to actually hold the gene lamp because, good sir, you are being given three wishes. Okay. You are being, you have given freely to, not only to hmm. Tiffany and to your kids and to your family, but also now to children, parents, families, educators, and those who love great children's books through your Lurie and Bear graphic novel series and through Bug Sandwich. You're going to be giving back to everyone in San Diego building a culture of reading in your classroom this upcoming Saturday. So this is your time to receive. And I think the only automatic disqualifiers, you can't ask for more wishes and you can't have anyone fall in love with you. Uh, you can't force anyone to fall in love with you. I don't think you have to worry about the aspect because I feel that Tiffany is your life partner. So you don't have to worry about that in any way, shape, or form. But the yep. only other automatic disqualifiers is that you can't ask for more wishes. So what would your wishes be? They can be for yourself. They can be for the children of the world. They can be for the planet. What would your three wishes be? Um, I'm going to combine all three into one big wish. An uber-sized wish. An okay. uber-sized wish, if you will. And that would be just that everybody treats each other with more kindness. Period. Mic drop. That's what I wish for. I think that the world needs it, and it would be a lot better place. It goes back to one of Mr. Rogers' uh, famous quotes of be kind, be kind, be kind. Yeah, it's great. And and those wishes, when they come from one's heart, they have a greater chance of coming true. And that's a very uh, palpable, tangible wish and something that can very much be a reality for not only for us, 
for everyone here at the Third Wheel Podcast Studio, but for all of you, our listeners and viewers, our friends and neighbors, and of course, our fellow shining stars. One of the fastest growing endorsements in the world of children's literature is akin to, if you remember growing up, Siskel and Ebert. Mm -hmm. When they loved a movie, they gave it two thumbs up. Well, even though Little Force is with us here in spirit, he's still with us walking this earthly plane. My little Shih Tzu Maltese is just back home in San Diego. One of the fastest growing endorsements in the world of children's literature is when Little Forest gives two paws up for a children's book that we are reviewing on the children's book spotlight series that we are showcasing and featuring, I should say. And Little Forest not only gives two paws up for Bug Sandwich, two pairs, two paws up for Louie and there in the land of anything goes, and two paws up for Louie and Bear Bite Back. So technically that's six paws, but he only has four. He just puts two paws up at a time. So again, that is one of the fastest growing endorsements in the world of children's literature. Little Forest, hard to believe, will be celebrating his two-year birthday in just a few short weeks. Raise your hand if you have had fun. On episode number 218 of the Children's Book Spotlight series, we see hands up from Brady, hands up from myself, hands up from the cast and crew behind the scenes at the Third Wheel Podcast Studio, hands up from the little ones that we see on screen as we like to say, mission accomplished, job well done. But there are many more magical trolley stops to come here in the Children's Book Spotlight series. When we hear the trolley, yes, even when we're in, we're, we're in Hollywood, the glitz and the glamour, We still hear trolleys wherever we go. When we hear the trolley, that means that it is time to go. We hope that you have enjoyed episode number 218 of the Children's Book Spotlight series. If you have, one of the many ways that, again, you can pledge your support for Brady and for us here at the Children's Book Spotlight series, if you have enjoyed episode number 218 of this very program, is to subscribe to PR from the Heart's official YouTube channel and to share this very spo- this very special trolley stop that you have just enjoyed. That is episode number 218 of the Children's Book Spotlight series on your favorite social media platforms of your choosing, especially if you want to be able to pass along the message of not only embracing yourself, but also embracing your destiny. Because remember, it's got that cyclical effect. When you embrace yourself, you have a greater chance of embracing what it is that you are called here to do. Just like Brady, he said, you know what? I want to do this for kids. I know that I can do it. He's fully embracing his destiny. He's fully living his dharma. That's another awesome word here. Dharma here on the Children's Book Spotlight series. But again, for all of you who are tuning in, who are planning on being in San Diego this upcoming Saturday for Building a Culture of Reading in your class, and we have just displayed the QR code on screen, you can still guarantee your seats for Building a Culture of Reading in your classroom This upcoming Saturday at Barnes & Noble Mira Mesa, for those who are watching episode number 218 of the Children's Book Spotlight series after the fact, stay connected to PR from the Heart's official website and YouTube channel, and you can watch the official event recap video of Building a Culture of Reading in Your Classroom 2024 courtesy of our friends and neighbors, our wonderful videographer team led by Finley and Rose Flower Records. But of course, if you are a children's or middle grade author and would love to share your inspiring story on a forthcoming edition of the Children's Book Spotlight series, just like Brady did here today, whether it be at the Third Wheel Podcast Studio here in Hollywood, if you are touring Los Angeles, if you live in Los Angeles, or if you would like to do one of our trusted remote editions of the program, we are now just a few short weeks away of the celebration of the six-year anniversary of the Children's Book Spotlight Series. So two concurrent anniversary celebrations, the 10-year anniversary of Pierre from the Heart, the six-year anniversary celebration of the Children's Book Spotlight Series. You can head on over to our official website, prfromtheheart.com, or connect with us via any of our social media platforms that you now see on screen. Instagram, Facebook, and X, all at PR from the Heart. Again, we know him and we love him. We give a little tip of the cap to... David Newell, you remember him and you love him as the beloved Mr. McFeely on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. We know him and we love him as David Newell. The sister program of the Children's Book Spotlight series is the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast. We just celebrated our three-year anniversary. We have now become one of the most popular children's book review programs for parents, educators, and librarians across the country. It is a blessing to be of service to all of you. If you are a children's author and would love to have David and I deliver a heartfelt review of your brand new children's book on a forthcoming edition of the Neighborly Reviews Bookcast, you know where to connect with us via our official website, prfromtheheart.com, or any of our social media platforms, all at PR from the Heart. And again, as we are celebrating our 10-year anniversary, We have been privileged and honored to be of service to some of the top names in the world of children's literature, ranging from John Para, 
Catherine Roy, Sharon Lois and Bram, and to even children's authors whose journeys are just taking flight. With the holiday season around the corner in 2025 almost on the horizon, many children's authors' dreams are now taking flight. And we hope that we can be of service to many more of you just as we have had the opportunity to do so for the past decade. If you are looking for dedicated PR support and want to be able to create your own book media tour in your neighborhood or a national book media tour, as many of our shining stars in the PR from the Heart family are crisscrossing this beautiful country of ours as we speak, you can head on over to our official website, prfromtheheart.com, schedule your courtesy connection call, and let us see how we can be of service to you in the process as we celebrate our 10-year anniversary. One final time, we encourage you to head on over to Brady Smith's official website, which we've included in the description below. You can head on over to Amazon.com, leave a five-star review for any of Brady's books, including Louis and Bear in the Land of Anything Goes, Louis and Bear Bite Back, and Bug Sandwich. Also, if you head on over to your favorite local library, your favorite children's and or independent bookstore, and they do not stock their copies of Bug Sandwich, Louis and Bear, In the Land of Anything Goes, and Louis and Bear Bite Back. You can make that kind recommendation. Let them know that you heard about Brady's work here on episode number 218 of the Children's Book Spotlight series. Keep the conversation going post-Children's Book Spotlight series as well, as we've included not only Brady's official website, but his Instagram page below as well, too. But again, when we hear the trolley, that means that it is time to go. We want to thank you for your continued support of PR from the Heart for the past 10 years for your continued support of the Children's Book Spotlight series, for your continued support of children's authors and illustrators such as Brady Smith, who again are doing wonderful and much needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and for those who love great children's books, for the pillars of our community, local libraries and children's and independent bookstores, but above all else, we want to thank you for helping us to walk home the children of the world. One final time, we felt his presence and his spirit, yes, even in Hollywood. The spirit and presence of Mr. Rogers goes with us wherever we go as well, too. Did you know that Mr. Rogers weighed 143 pounds for his entire natural adult life? In many respects, I like to feel that he might have met Ponce de Leon in a pants in a past life because that was his way of connecting to the fountain of youth. But yes, there's one, interestingly enough, there's one letter in I, there's four letters in love and three letters in you. And as we give a little tip of the cap to Mr. Rogers, as we officially close on episode number 218 of the Children's Book Spotlight series here at the Third Wheel Podcast Studio in Hollywood, California, we like to share our favorite three numbers as a little tip of the cap to Mr. Rogers. And as Brady was kind enough to be able to join us here in studio today, there are two letters in we. Four letters in love, three letters in you. Our favorite three numbers here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series and Pierre from the Heart are 243. Two letters in we, four letters in love, three letters in you. Just as Mr. Rogers did so, we do so in our own way. We are reminding you of your inherent worth, your inherent value. We see you. We see your gifts. We see your skills. We see your talents. We see the capabilities that you have and the ability to not only embrace yourself, but also embrace and fulfill your, de your destiny. That we like you, that we love you just the way that you are. So, for Brady Smith, for myself, John Massalonis, to the entire crew lead, led by Mike and the rest of the team here at the Third Wheel Podcast Studio in Hollywood, California, this is a really cool vibe. This is something new that we're, that we're trying out here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series. So anytime that we interview celebrity children's authors, New York Times bestsellers, those top award-winning and best-selling children's authors and middle-grade authors who are touring Los Angeles, we look forward to bringing more of the Children's Book Spotlight Series to you in the future as the trolley then travels from San Diego to Los Angeles. But we look forward to seeing many of you, our friends and neighbors, this upcoming Saturday at Building a Culture of Reading in Your Classroom. Brady Smith will be co-headlining the event along with Sharon and Randy Hampson from, of course, the iconic children's music group, Sharon Lois and Bram, as well as award-winning children's author, one of our featured children's author clients, appear from the heart, Alyssa Schwartz. And we're going to be co-moderating a wonderful panel meet and greet Author signing, the whole nine yards for more information, of course. We've shared the QR code one final time for all of you to enjoy. But again, if you are out of the San Diego area and are unable to join us for building a culture of reading in your classroom, check out the event recap because you'll really be able to feel that palpable energy and why Brady Smith is a shining star and one of our fellow friends and neighbors in the world of children's literature. And now, you know, a, a good extended member of the PR from the Hart family. So for Brady Smith, for myself, John Massalonis, for everyone behind the scenes at the Third Wheel Podcast Studio, thank you for helping us to walk home the children of the world, our fellow friends, our fellow neighbors, and our fellow shining stars. Goodbye for now.